Hey everyone, it's Jason from Rockland Technologies. Now, a few weeks back, we introduced to you the Alpha AWUS036 AXML Wi-Fi 6E USB adapter, the first to hit the market with external antenna connectors, and we promised you some speed tests, and we delivered. We've got a series coming out. This is the first in a series of different speed testing that we're doing with the adapter. Now, this series will include some videos where we use different Wi-Fi 6E model routers, and also where we use iPerf. But for the video today, we're going to go to my house on location and we're going to test out a TP-Link AXE 5400 Wi-Fi 6E router. If you'd like more information about the different routers that are going to be used in the series, be sure to take a look at our YouTube channel. We have a forthcoming video from Gabriel Shaparo that's going to talk about the three different Wi-Fi 6E routers that we use. But as I said for today, we're using the TP-Link one. Let's take a look at that router specs and get into our speed testing. I've made a mock-up of a home similar to mine that will help us understand where our router and test areas are. We have the TP-Link router in this study area just behind the kitchen and then through the living room and into the master bedroom on the far side of the house we have our test laptop. So this means we've got to go from this desk here down this hallway through this wall on the back side of the kitchen, through this wall on the back side of the living room and into the corner of the bedroom. But we weren't able to get a reliable connection on the 6 gigahertz band at this distance. You see, when it comes to distance, as the frequency goes down, the greater your distance or range. But when it comes to speed, the inverse is true. The higher the band, the better the speed. So what we needed to do was move our test area closer to our TP-Link router. Now we moved our test laptop into the living room, which is about halfway across the house from the router. We use our computers a lot here, and we're hoping that we'll get some good 6 gigahertz speeds. We're going to be using Google Speed Test for our testing today. Just go into a Google search, type in Speed Test. We like this particular Speed Test because there's no advertisements that could affect the data throughput. Our first test will be using the 2.4 GHz band of the router using our Qualcomm onboard card in our Lenovo laptop. And you'll see right away, the speeds aren't horrible, they're nowhere near what we'd like to get from our Wi-Fi 6E router. Now our speeds here in Florida are through AT&T Fiber, they're up to 1 gigabyte per second. We don't really ever see anything near this, this is a theoretical maximum, but we're hoping with our 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz testing, we might come out a little bit better than we did with our 2.4. Now we'll begin our second test on the 5 gigahertz band using our same Lenovo built-in Wi-Fi card. Quick side note, one thing we like about this TP-Link router versus others like the Eero Pro 6E is that you can have a different SSID or network name for your 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz signal so you know which band you're connecting to for test purposes. Immediately we see the 5 GHz performance on the Lenovo card and TP-Link router is much faster than the 2.4. Do keep in mind we're just showing you the average of all our tests just for brevity. We're not showing you each individual test, but this is about what we saw across the board for our 5 GHz testing. The real question is, what's going to happen when we switch over to the Alpha AWUS036 AXML and test out the 6 GHz band of the TP-Link router? So you see on the left we have the results of our last speed test from the 5 GHz, which was our average. Now we've got to switch over to the TP-Link 6G signal so that we can get on the 6 GHz band and run a test. You'll notice that our speed test results on the 6E band were almost twice as fast, which was pretty impressive. Now, we did see some anomalies along the way where when we'd run various tests, sometimes the speed on 6 GHz would slow down and be comparable to 5. But overall, on average, we did see a pretty significant difference in speed at this shorter distance. Do keep in mind that in the original uh, in the original part of the video when we were on the other side of the house we were not able to connect at 6 gigahertz and we could only connect on 5 gigahertz. So if you're doing some speed testing of your own and you find that the 6 gigahertz band is either very slow or um, you know not very strong of a signal you may want to check your specs and see what your bit rate is. You can get to this screen here by pulling up your uh, network properties and remember earlier in the video we were unable to get a 6 gigahertz connection from the far side of the house now we were actually connected there but at just one bar and as you can see on the screen our link speed was 8500 kilobits per second when you have a very weak signal you'll have a very low bit rate connection so from that side of the house it just made sense for us to connect over the 5 gigahertz band and we had to move closer to the living room to get a reliable connection to the 6 gigahertz band 
So there you have it. What we saw at my house was that with a Wi-Fi 6E connection, we were able to get faster speeds than 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz uh, when we were a little bit closer to the router, when we were about halfway across the house. But when we were all the way across the house, because the 6 gigahertz band doesn't travel that far, uh, we didn't get a good signal and we had to stay on the 5 gigahertz. So it's important to remember the adapters are backward compatible. So if you do need to go a longer distance, you can always get on the 5 gigahertz band. Now, before we end this video, I want to go over a couple of other important important things. The first one being that um, when you're doing testing at your house, you're going to want to make sure that you disable your onboard Wi-Fi card when you go to test the Alpha adapter. And the reason is because if the onboard card is connected to your internet and the Alpha adapter is connected as well, the computer is going to use the onboard Wi-Fi card for its uh, throughput speed. So you're actually still going to be testing the internal Wi-Fi card if you don't disable the card. Now, disabling the onboard Wi-Fi card is easy. You just go to the device manager, uh, click on the network adapter the internal Wi-Fi card, right click and select disable, and then take that same process to enable it. Just right click and select enable. For the alpha adapter, you won't need to enable or disable it. You simply plug it in when you want to use it and unplug it from the PC when you're finished. Well, thanks for tuning in for this first speed test in our series. Stay tuned for future videos in this series where we test with different Wi-Fi 6E routers.